What's good? There are a lot of overhyped and trendy pieces that I will never buy. For a multitude of reasons, and today I'm going to share those reasons with you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new, and let's get started. The Supreme Box Logo Tee. I'll never do it. I am just not interested in paying $400 for a cotton t-shirt with a brand's logo on it. And actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever purchased anything solely because of the logo. Like usually when I buy something that has a logo on it, I buy it because I like the actual design of the piece itself. For example, my Saint Laurent sunset bag, uh, the logo on that bag is pretty conspicuous. <laughs> like it's definitely there and she's in your face. But I bought this specific bag because I actually liked the design and the structure of the bag itself. They have another style that had a logo on it that was super popular. I don't know if you guys remember that bag, but everyone had it. I don't even, I don't even know what the name of the bag was, but like literally everyone had it. Wow, what an era. But I didn't like it, so I didn't buy it. I really like bags with structure. Um, I just prefer that type of look. So instead of buying that bag that has a logo on it, I bought a different bag that has a logo on it that I liked better. And it's black with gold hardware. I love gold. Anyway, I went a little off topic there, but uh, I will never buy this t-shirt. And that's not to say I'll never buy a Supreme item. I've purchased like a hat before and I really loved the color of it. The color was so beautiful. It's like this beautiful coral color and I love the corduroy on it. But as far as like a cotton t-shirt with a logo on it that costs $400, it's just not part of the program. I will never buy designer jewelry. If you go into like Versace or Saint Laurent or Chanel or Dior or literally any other luxury designer boutique, they will be selling jewelry. You'll notice that they sell jewelry. As a consumer, it is not in my best interest to purchase jewelry from a luxury designer brand simply because they tend to be very expensive and they're not even made out of real gold. <laughs> Let me show you an example. Okay, so I'm on the Saint Laurent website right now and they have this ring that is listed for $295. It's just like this metal ring. <laughs> now, I have a very similar ring that I purchased from my local jeweler. It's very similar, isn't it? It has like the same shape. It's like the same design, basically. I purchased this ring for double what this Saint Laurent ring costs. But here's the difference. This ring is made out of real 18 karat solid gold and it has diamonds on it, it has real diamonds on it. This Saint Laurent ring costs $300 and it's made out of 100% brass. There is literally no gold in this ring, not even 10 karat. It's literally all brass and it costs $300. When I buy jewelry, I always try to buy real solid gold, even if it's like 14 karat or 10 karat, for a multitude of reasons. Number one, it is gold, so it's le way less likely to tarnish than brass is. And number two, gold is a precious metal, so it pretty much holds its value and it adds to your net worth because it is a precious metal. Like there's actual liquid financial benefits to buying gold jewelry. It's a liquid hard asset. And number three, I love the idea or like the tradition of heirloom jewelry. Like I want to be able to pass down my jewelry to my children if I have them. Um, my mom, these two rings that I have right now, these came from my mom. These used to be my mom's and she gave them to me. She bought these when she was like in her 20s or in her 30s and she gave them to me. I don't know, I just really like that idea of having heirloom jewelry and like passing down. So the next time you think about buying jewelry, skip the designer jewelry, go to your local family owned jeweler, support a small business and get beautiful jewelry that holds its value and adds to your net worth instead of buying a ring that costs $295 and is made from 100% brass. If you tried to sell this ring, they would not give you $295 for it. <laughs> it's just not part of the program. 
I will also never buy luxury sneakers that cost an outrageous amount of money. Luxury and streetwear used to be two separate entities, and I really liked them being two separate entities. But once luxury got a hold of streetwear, th that created a new type of exclusivity that was rooted in class exclusion. And like now suddenly sneakers cost $1,000. <laughs> and I don't know, it's kind of antithetical to what streetwear was rooted in. Now I do have two pairs of sneakers that are from designer brands. Uh, they're not high-end luxury brands. I have one pair from Michael Kors that I bought literally eight years ago and I still love them. And then I also have a pair from Coach, but I actually like the design of them. They're really fun. They also were not $1,000, but those Balenciaga Triple S sneakers, I just don't like them enough to justify spending that much money. Like I have a pair of similar dad sneakers that I got from Puma and they're so they're super dope. I love the colorway, they're super cool. Uh, and they did not cost $975. Look, at the end of the day, that's just the nature of luxury. It's expensive, it's exclusive. It's exclusive because it's expensive. I have luxury items myself. I am not anti-luxury by any means. <laughs> I like mixing luxury pieces and streetwear pieces in the same outfit but I don't necessarily like wearing luxury streetwear. I don't know, I'm just not the biggest fan of what luxury has done with streetwear specifically, so that's just not part of the program. All right, now let's move on to fashion pieces that don't have a socio-political reasoning behind why I don't like them. <laughs> Ballet flats, I'll never buy them. I hate them so much. First of all, they're not comfortable. They are terrible to walk in. Second of all, they don't look that great. <laughs> it's not sexy. If you're gonna be uncomfortable, at least be sexy. <laughs> Me at the club with social anxiety. Ballet flats add no value to any of my outfits. In fact, I actually think they make my outfits worse. I don't like the way they look. I much prefer a flat shoe like a loafer, but ballet flats, listen, I respect that they exist, but they're just not part of the program. I can't make a fashion roast video without including the boat neck neckline. I don't know how many times I have dragged boat neck necklines on my channel before or in a video. I'm not a huge fan of like boat neck necklines. The only thing is this boat neck. We have this stupid boat neck neckline. I'd buy this if it didn't have a boat neck neckline. I just don't like them. I think it's because I have a really skinny neck and so I really like when tops, like I love crew necks because they accentuate and complement the neck. You know, they go, it fits perfectly around the neck. Boat neck necklines, it just like, I don't know. I think it just creates a really weird shape that's not flattering. Like it just looks weird and I hate it. <laughs> I don't know, it's a very old school style. Like it's very Chico's. Do y'all remember that store? Chico's. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm on their website right now and there's a boat neck top on page one. Wow, I hate this. <laughs> it's just not part of the program. I will never buy an item with polka dots on it. And I'm talking about like traditional polka dots because I do have a dress that I absolutely love that has dots on it. But like one of the main characteristics of polka dot is that the, the dots are uniform. And on the dress that I have, the dots are like, they have like this hand-drawn style and they're not uniform. So my dress is a little bit more contemporary. I don't know, polka dots seem very dated. Like it's so 1950s. Reminds me of racism. I'm joking. I mean, the 50s do remind me of racism a lot, actually, but polka dots don't. <laughs> My favorite fashion era is the 70s, and 70s fashion was like a direct response to the tradition and conservatism of 50s fashion. Like, polka dots were just not a 70s pattern. Like, it's very 50s. I love the makeup of the 50s, but not necessarily the fashion. Now, the girls were serving looks. Like, don't get me wrong, especially Miss 
Lauren Bacall. I love the new look and A-line silhouettes and, you know, accentuating waistlines, but the 70s, 80s, and 90s are just so much more my speed. I feel like, I don't know, women's fashion in the 50s was like very feminine, and there's nothing wrong with feminine clothing, but I value my masculinity a lot. And so I like to tap into my masculinity and kind of balance my masculinity with my femininity in my style, which is why I love 70s fashion, because I feel like they that era meshed both of those together so well. Um, along with the 80s and the 90s, but especially the 90s. Like the 90s did that very well too. All that to say, I don't like polka dots. <laughs> They're not part of the program. So what are some pieces that you will never buy and what's the reasoning behind them? I always like asking people why they do things. I'm very analytical, so I like knowing the why of decisions that people make. I like knowing the why of everything, but let me know in the comments. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys next time.